We're here to talk about a new comprehensive research program uh, for rivaroxaban in patients with cancer. So let's talk about this subject. It's called Callisto, and I'm with Dr. Alok Karana, who is an MD and Cleveland Clinic's Director of GI Malignancies and Chair in, in Oncology at the Cleveland Clinic, and also Chair of the Callisto Advisory Council and Co-Chair of the VTE Prevention Study. Let's talk about Callisto first off. This is a topic of, of great interest just to me. I know in oncology, this is it's still a little bit new. Where are we in terms of using some of these new agents like rivaroxaban in oncology, in hematology? Well, we're getting there. We're not quite where we want to be. Um, the first thing to recognize is that blood clots are a really big deal in patients with cancer. Um, it's actually the second leading cause of death in patients with cancer. Increased morbidity, increased mortality, uh, much greater risk of hospitalization and so on. So there's a lot of urgent need to address this issue in the cancer population. In the past, we've been hampered by the fact that all of the drugs that we had available for this were primarily self-injectables, self low molecular weight heparins. And they're expensive drugs. A lot of patients who have uh, injectable plans, prescription plans, pay a much greater sort of cost. So direct consumer costs are much greater uh, with injectables. And so there's a big challenge in sort of using those types of agents in, in prevention and even in, in, to some extent in treatment. Especially when it's long term, because exactly. patients right. would, would so, rather have another option. Right. And so this is actually much more similar to the cardiology field where you, you, know, you sort of take blood thinners forever. Whereas in other VT prevention settings, is it you know, post hip replacement or post knee replacement, it's only for three weeks or four weeks at the most. Uh, so when you're asking patients to take this for months and months on end, you, know, you want it to be as, as patient friendly as possible. So you say to them, we don't have all that much data, but there is an advantage. And they often will say, <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll take the easier route. Thank right. You right. And we have a lot of data in ASH uh, this year. So can yeah, this. I've noticed that. Yeah. So Callisto is this big program. It's a set of about seven clinical trials, and it's, it's addressing, you know, we can't answer all the questions uh, in one big clinical trial. So it's addressing all the different aspects of this type of uh, this illness. Uh, so we're looking at prevention, we're looking at treatment, we're looking at clinical pathways. And one trial that was reported today at ASH was looking at a clinical pathway. This came out of Jerry Soff uh, and the Memorial Sloan Kettering data set. And they identified, uh, you know, the benefit of being on rivaroxaban uh, for treatment of cancer-associated thrombosis as opposed to a daily self-injection. They actually found less than 1% of patients wanted the injectable. They, they would rather have the, have the oral agent, which is not surprising. No, not at all. So what other issues? You've got seven trials. You've got two registries. Mm -hmm. So this is a big, uh, big group. You've got, what is it, something like 4,000 patients globally that you're helping? Yeah, um, the biggest trial is prevention. So it's taking patients with a risk score of two or higher. Uh, we, we presented data today looking at a risk score of three or higher with, with an older agent, low molecular weight heparin. But the new study looks at a risk score of two or higher, so an expanded uh, high-risk cohort and uh, versus placebo. It's a 700 patient study, it's a global study, uh, nine countries, uh, close to 100 sites. We just opened in the US uh, a couple of weeks ago, so we're excited to get this going. What about safety? Well, safety is always paramount. Uh, one thing to know is that just as cancer patients are at high risk for thrombosis, they're also at high risk for bleeding. So you, know, you wanna address that very carefully. You don't want to give drugs to patients who don't need them, and hence we do this risk assessment uh, stratification. And you also want to uh, be mindful of the risk of bleeding. You want to make sure patients are educated. Most trials in this setting have not shown an increase in major bleeding. They have shown an increase in non-major bleeding, but not in major bleeding. So if bleeding does occur, it's relatively controlled. But again, cancer patients have a high rate of bleeding, whether they're on a blood thinner or not. I mean, in some of the pivotal trials of the newer agents, like rivaroxaban, there were patients who had cancer who were enrolled in the, in the trial. Right. Not a great number, but there were some. Yes, and that subgroup analysis has been presented, and based on the subgroup analysis, it looks like it's a pretty safe drug to use. And that's, that was borne out in data presented earlier today from Sloan Kettering and from other institutions, suggesting it's a safe drug, not a big risk of bleeding, certainly not any more than we see with other, other anticoagulants in this space. So is some of this data being published? The subgroup analysis of the registration trials of the uh, novel oral agents has been published, um, and the sort of the 
clinical pathway types of clinical trials. The abstracts were presented today and hopefully the data will come out soon. The big prophylaxis study, the big treatment studies are ongoing. We probably expect another year to two years before that data comes out. And in terms of the registry, is you just trying to follow all of the patients or what are you doing with those? Yeah, so, so I'm a big fan of registries. You know, the, we really select patients for clinical trials that are really healthy and don't have any medical problems and they're all, you know, 10 years younger than the average cancer patient. And that's great for sort of comparing, you know, one treatment versus another, but it doesn't really tell us what's happening in, in the real world. And a registry is a good way to get at that data, to understand you know, what are patients taking, how compliant are they, how much are they adhering to this. We actually had a study published today which said, showed that even the low molecular weight heparins are the, you know, the guideline recommended option. First of all, only a quarter of patients were on it. And second, they were sticking to this, to the injectable about, for about three and a half months and then switching to something else, whereas they were sticking with oral anticoagulants for at least six months, sometimes longer. So the, you know, if, even if you know one drug's recommended by guideline, but patients are taking it for half as long as the other drug, you know how efficacious would, would that be? So I think we do need to keep sort of patient-centeredness in mind as, as we develop new new treatment paradigms. Well, the research program is called Callisto, so please uh, check for that, and also for all of the other reporting that we have coming out of Ash 2015 here in Orlando. I'm Rick McGuire.